Subscribe if you like scary stories. My name is Bob, and I've been living in a flat on top of a shop for about five years. It's an aged structure, but it has a certain charm, and it's situated in a lively section of town known for its nightlife. I'm not really a party-goer, but the vicinity is often teeming with intoxicated folks during the weekends and even some weekdays. On the street level, there's a nondescript door nestled between two shops. It's easy to overlook, and many pedestrians likely pass it without realizing. This door is never locked, so anyone can waltz into my building and approach my flat without needing a key. My flat isn't the only one accessed through this door. There's another flat that houses a couple of university students whom I seldom cross paths with. One regular Friday evening, I got home from hanging out with my pals. It was around 1 a.m. and I was drained. Ready to hit the hay, I headed straight to my bedroom and drifted off to sleep. But not long after, I was roused by the sound of conversation in my living room. At first I assumed it was my flatmate, but the voices didn't match. Plus, he was supposed to be out of town for the weekend, so it couldn't be him. Cautiously, I got out of bed and crept towards my door to eavesdrop. Two men's voices were discernible, and they sounded like they had a few drinks in them. Realizing I had to act quickly to prevent any mishaps, I took a deep breath and emerged from my room. The sight of two men looking startled greeted me. One was clutching a beer bottle and the other, a lit cigarette. They stared at me as if I was the one out of place. What are you doing here? I managed to say, attempting to come off as intimidating as I could. However, my words were met with a laugh from one of the men. Both were evidently intoxicated and didn't seem to take my presence seriously. I could sense my pulse quickening and a surge of adrenaline filling me. What are you doing here? I demanded again. This is my place, and you've got to get out right now, I hollered. However, the pair just cackled once more and carried on their conversation as though I was invisible. I could feel my irritation and fury mounting. I knew I had to do something to drive them out. Leave, right now, I roared, moving a bit closer to them. That's when they turned more hostile. One of them shoved me back, and I lost balance, stumbling into the coffee table and toppling a glass. These guys were heavily intoxicated, and I had no idea what they might do. I darted towards the bathroom, bolting the door behind me. I don't believe they pursued me. Immediately, I dialed 911, and the cops were there in no time. They arrested the two men and escorted them away in handcuffs. I was trembling, yet relieved that the ordeal had concluded. I spent a while talking to the police, and I chose to go ahead with pressing charges. The police discovered that the men had entered via the always open door beneath my flat. It appeared that I had failed to lock my own door that evening. It was a mortifying blunder, and I could see that the cops were slightly exasperated with me. I can't really fault them for their annoyance. I was fatigued and had been drinking too. Nevertheless, I couldn't shake off the feeling of being foolish. This incident took place when I was just 13, and now I'm 20. My folks were out of town due to a family crisis. Being an only kid, I often stayed home by myself without any fear. On the third night of their absence, I was engrossed in my video games, munching on snacks, when suddenly, there was a knock on the door. I was surprised that someone would be visiting at such a late hour. Approaching the door, I noticed a man peeking through the little glass window nearby. He was making a lot of noise claiming he was badly injured and pleading to be let in. Upon asking him what was wrong, he mentioned that he had a broken foot. I found this somewhat odd and asked him how he had managed to break his foot. He said he was strolling around the neighborhood and had tripped. He described how his foot had twisted in an unusual way and he was in agony. He threatened to sue me if I didn't assist him. I told him I would dial an ambulance and instructed him to wait outside. His response was to threaten me with violent harm saying he would cut my throat and mutilate me. I quickly fetched my dad's shotgun, which was stored at the top of a kitchen cupboard, and I also dialed 911. I informed the man that the police were en route, but he dismissed this, saying they wouldn't arrive soon enough. He then began trying to shatter my dining room window. His strikes seemed powerful enough to break it. In a panic, I rushed upstairs to my bedroom and took refuge under my bed. I contacted the police again, and was assured that they would arrive shortly. 
Just as the operator was saying this, I heard the sound of breaking glass. He must have found a large stone in my front garden. I could hear him searching through the rooms downstairs, and then heard his footsteps coming up the stairs. He entered my parents' bedroom, and I could hear him rummaging through their wardrobe. Next, I heard him attempting to unlock my door. I held the shotgun in a firm grip, ready for him to force his way through the door. He began kicking at it with all his strength. After a few powerful kicks, the door gave way. I could see his feet as he attempted to open the locked closet in my room, which I'd intentionally locked to throw him off. He proclaimed, I know you're hiding in here. I was conflicted between shooting at his legs or trying to slip past him and make a run for it. However, I knew I couldn't sneak past without making some kind of sound. In that nerve-wracking moment, I forgot that I was hiding under a bed and accidentally hit my head, making a loud noise. The man spun around and taunted, Oh, trying to outsmart me, are you? Smart me. Suddenly, the sound of police sirens reached my ears. Damn, you got lucky this time, but you won't escape the next, he said, visibly shaken. As he tried to flee from my room, I reached out and grabbed his right foot, causing him to tumble to the ground with a thud. I was holding on to him with all my strength. The sound of police officers charging up the stairs was a relief. They managed to subdue the man. I emerged with my shotgun, only to have the officers aim their weapons at me. Quickly I explained the whole situation and they understood. Turns out they had found the man's van parked right in front of my house. The van contained an array of sharp knives, duct tape, a camera, and a rope. The thought of what could have happened if I hadn't locked the closet sent chills down my spine. The police contacted my parents and informed them about the incident. They rushed back home three days earlier than planned. Both my mom and dad held me in a tight embrace. My mom revealed that the man was sentenced to a 15-year prison term, not long after we moved out of that house. For a while I had frequent nightmares about the horrifying event, and it took a significant amount of time for me to feel normal again. From that point forward, I never spent a single night alone until I moved out of my parents' home. I now keep three firearms in my home as a precautionary measure, just in case a similar situation ever arises again. When I was 14, my folks had to go away for the weekend on their own. They had some business matters to handle so I got to be in the house by myself. Usually, when these things happened, my mom would go along with my dad, because his job often required socializing, and it was better when they were both there. Before, I used to stay with my Uncle Sam during these times, but he had his own stuff going on, so my parents figured I was mature enough to be home alone. I was really looking forward to the weekend, with plans to just chill, watch some TV, and play video games till late, which were things I'd typically do anyway. The first evening went as usual. I hung out with my buddy Jake, who lived just down the road. Jake took off around midnight, and I headed to bed an hour later, completely zonked out by 1.30. I woke up suddenly in the middle of the night. My clock showed it was 3.30 a.m., and I could hear some odd sounds from the lower floor, like someone was moving around clumsily. At first I thought it was just a dream, or maybe I was still groggy. So I tried to shake it off and go back to sleep but the sounds didn't stop. Even so, I was so beat, I just rolled over and fell back asleep. When morning came, I had a weird sensation. Yes, the house was quiet, and I was by myself, but something felt off. I couldn't really put my finger on it, but I knew something wasn't right. I tried to shake off this creepy feeling, got out of bed and went to freshen up in the bathroom. But when I walked downstairs, I was totally shocked. The living room was all over the place. Sofa pillows were tossed around the room, the drawers of the TV unit were all open, and there were papers all over. I felt my stomach drop as I realized what had happened. Someone had broken into our house. Quickly, I went to check the front door and found it was not locked. There were no smashed windows or any sign of forced entry. That's when I figured that the burglars must have walked right in through the front door, which I, to my dismay, remembered leaving unlocked. I couldn't help but feel a bit of guilt and stupidity about it. The gravity of what had happened began to dawn on me, and a wave of anxiety washed over. I was unsure of the next steps or who to contact. I tried reaching my parents but there was no response to my calls or messages. Here I was, all alone, terrified, feeling exposed, and fearing the robbers might return. 
Deciding to involve the authorities, I called the police. They instructed me to stay outside the house until they got there. So, there I was, in my PJs, standing out in the chilly morning air, anxiously awaiting the arrival of the police. When the police arrived, they listened to my account of the events for about 10 minutes before they started their investigation. I observed them, as they dusted the place for fingerprints and took pictures of the mess. The whole situation was surreal, like a scene straight out of a detective movie. After the police left, the feeling of being alone returned. For the following few days, I kept contact with the police. They informed me that there had been a series of break-ins in the neighborhood, and they were looking into multiple cases that could be linked. This was a shock to me. I had always believed our area to be really secure. However, there was some comfort in knowing that the police were doing everything they could to apprehend the culprits. Ultimately, the burglars were never found. When I confessed to my parents about leaving the door unlocked, they were more understanding than I expected. My dad even commented that the robbers would have found a way in regardless. I couldn't be sure if he really believed that or he was just trying to alleviate my guilt. Either way, I was grateful for his words. The thought of being alone in the house with the burglars was downright chilling. It made me wonder about what might have happened if I had gone downstairs when I first heard those sounds. Would they have bolted? Or could things have turned even more frightening for me? It's hard to guess their possible actions. The situation could have turned seriously ugly. This story is from more than a decade ago, but I still bring it up now and then. It's the spooky tale I like to share when we're sitting around a campfire. When I was just 12, my mom began leaving me by myself at home. You might think that's a bit young, but I was pretty grown up for my age, and my mom had to work quite a bit. That's how I rationalize it, at least. We lived in a two-bedroom flat in a big complex not far from a main road. One evening, like many others, I was alone at home while mom was out working late. I was watching some TV and gradually getting through my schoolwork. Suddenly, there was a loud explosive sound. I wasn't sure where it came from exactly, but it sounded like a gunshot. I had never heard a gunshot up close, so I wasn't certain. The sound wave rattled my young body thoroughly. It was like being struck by a speeding vehicle. The impact was truly intense. Without a second thought, I leapt to the floor and took cover beneath the coffee table. Noise erupted outside my apartment, in the hallway but I couldn't figure out what was going on. The gunshot echo was still reverberating in my ears, and I was utterly terrified. I tried my best to keep my cool, but my mind was swirling with fear and thoughts of what might be occurring just beyond the apartment door. I wanted to ring the police, but my phone was out of reach, charging in the other room. I was too petrified to move, so I just lay there and wait. Then, the wailing of sirens started. Gathering all my bravery, I dared to peek through the window. Initially, only a single police car showed up, but soon, more began to pour in. Before I knew it, around a dozen police cars and a couple of fire engines were parked in front of my apartment building. Voices were audible from outside, yet I couldn't discern what they were saying. A sickening sensation started to churn in my belly, and I longed for the comforting presence of my parents. The fear of being alone was overwhelming. After what seemed like an eternity, but was probably just a couple of minutes, the hubbub outside started to subside. I could hear the murmur of police officers conversing and the static-filled sound of radios chattering. I wondered what had transpired and if anyone had been injured. Then, a knock came at my door. I was petrified momentarily. My mom had always instructed me not to answer the door when I was alone, but if it was the police, perhaps it was an exception. Next, I heard a voice announcing it was the police and requesting that I open the door. I ambled over and hesitantly unlocked the door. Standing outside were two police officers with grave expressions on their faces. One of them inquired if I was all right, to which I just nodded. Tears were streaming down my face by then. When he asked if my parents were around, I informed him that they weren't, but I provided him with my mom's contact number. They phoned her and stayed with me until she returned home. As it turned out, my neighbor, who I'd only noticed a few times, was a fugitive. He'd been residing there for several months and was implicated in at least one murder. The police had been summoned when his firearm discharged accidentally. 
I was astounded and couldn't fathom that an individual of that sort had been dwelling so close to me. The police officers commended me for my bravery, saying I did well to stay composed during the external turmoil. The neighboring apartment was cordoned off for several days thereafter. They employed some sort of tape to seal the door whenever they left the scene unattended for a day or two. The adhesive left a residue on the door that never really disappeared. I continued living in that building until I turned 18, and each time I walked past that door, I would spot the residue marks and be reminded of that terrifying night.